today uh, we are going to discuss one important intervention which we can do at birth, uh, which will prevent the uh, disability uh, in the child. We all learned that uh, congenital hypothyroidism is the cause for the most important or the most common cause for uh, preventable mental retardation. So that is why screening for congenital hypothyroidism becomes a birthright for every baby born. So regarding the uh, history of screening, the incidence of uh, congenital hypothyroidism when we look at literature in the pre-screening era, that when the diagnosis was made clinically only. So at that time, it was around one in 6,000 births. And uh, we all know that screening was uh, started uh, in Canada, in Quebec in 1972. And after three years, when they did the review of the data, they identified that there were seven cases out of uh, 47,000 live births. And within a few years, the global incidence of congenital hypothyroidism had become one in 3,000 to 4,000. See, all these happened because the screening appeared. Because initially, we all know for a very long time, we all knew that congenital hypothyroidism can cause uh, severe mental retardation and severe disability in a child. But what happened with a few years of screening itself is the number of cases which was identified actually doubled with the screening. And uh, in the present day, the global numbers are actually the detection rates have increased over the last three decades to 1 in 1,400 to 1 in 2,800 in various parts of the world. And our experience from the state-run newborn screening, which is there since 2013, is now the number is less than 1 in 1,000. So that is the importance of uh, screening. And our SAT data says over the last three years, 2018, it is... Uh, uh, 12 cases out of around 12,000 uh, deliveries, that is again nearing 2000. 2019 also uh, almost 11,343 uh, babies were screened and we found 11 positive cases. And in 2020, the data is actually up to June, that is why it is 4,612 and out of which we have uh, five cases. And we actually started uh, the newborn screening program uh, only in major hospitals where there were more than 100 deliveries in a month. And uh, later it was uh, uh, extended to all the uh, hospitals where there is delivery. And now we have a very uh, robust follow-up system connected to the district uh, early intervention centers. I think um, uh, our... Uh, Vishar Desar is here, who is in charge of the Ernakulam Center. He can also give his comments after the talk. And uh, what you see in the background is the uh, automated machine, uh, which we use to do the, the newborn screening now. Initially, it was uh, uh, the ELISA uh, method. And um, uh, we had uh, many problems, like we got the reports very late after two weeks, three weeks, and all. But now with this automated, or automated uh, machines in uh, all our public health labs, we are uh, not having such problems and we get the results mostly in a, a time period of uh, three to five days and maximum uh, one week. So why screening is important? Because uh, we can identify only 10% of babies uh, by looking at the symptoms at birth. So, and only 30% could be symptomatic by two months. And the best results, the literature has proved that the best results we get only if we start treatment within the first two weeks of life. So there is uh, no other way, no other uh, method of uh, uh, identifying this uh, uh, congenital hypothyroidism and it is only screening. So there is uh, nothing like doing a clinical examination and finding out uh, congenital hypothyroidism. So why screening? because we don't want to see such children. Both these children I have um, seen during my training at Bangalore. Uh, they were um, uh, unidentified uh, till the, the boy was actually four years of age when he came to us 
and the girl was one year and was having severe manifestations of congenital hypothyroidism. And at this uh, stage, even the, making the diagnosis does not help the children, you know, because already the brain has been damaged. So we don't want to see all these features like cold species, puffiness of eyes, protruding tongue, pallor, lethargy, hypotonia, distended abdomen, umbilical hernia, prolonged jaundice, constipation, feeding difficulties, inactivity, microglossia, white fondant, mottling, hypothermia, everything which is listed in Nelson. Uh, we, the, there should be a time when we don't see all this because we identify all babies with congenital hypothyroidism uh, at birth by newborn screening and treatment. So now we know hormone replacement at less than 30 days of age have a mean IQ of 106. So uh, that means even 106 is not a uh, very good IQ. So even with the early treatment, there is some amount of uh, uh, loss of IQ, at least in severe cases. And uh, if you delay treatment till three to six months, uh, the mean intelligence quotient is actually 70. So that is the importance of uh, screening again and again. So how do we screen? What we use is a uh, filter paper technique where we do a heel prick and uh, impregnate the filter paper. There are four uh, circles which are given. We have to impregnate the paper uh, using the heel pricked blood. And um, um, when we use such a system, make sure that the blood actually stains the other side of the paper then only there will be enough uh, sample because what they do is they make a, a punch uh, a punched out piece of this paper and that paper is uh, going to be used for testing so if we don't collect enough blood if the circle is not full or if the other side of the paper had not stained if the paper is not soft we may get a falsely low value so make sure when you are using a filter paper the sample is taken properly so it needs some training of the staff. That is very, very important. Alternately, we can very well do a clot blood, clot blood sampling. Clot blood sampling and uh, direct blood, blood spot examination using the heel prick method are uh, uh, having same efficacy for uh, um, detecting congenital hypothyroidism. When we are using a, a clot blood, the most important thing is we will not miss any child at all because during birth itself, we are collecting the sample. For the heel prick, there may be some early discharges and uh, there may be some misses. Maybe the child is taken to the nursery, things like that can happen. But um, uh, why the uh, filter paper method is more popular is because uh, when we are doing a newborn screening use a, using a filter paper method, uh, we can always screen for other diseases, other diseases like uh, uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. We can detect PKU. We can look for galactosemia. All these need some time. That is why the uh, direct blood sport test is uh, done only after at least 48 hours of life. Usually it is done after 72 hours of life in the West. Maybe it can be done up to five years because in many countries it is done by the community nurses at home after discharge. Uh, for us, uh, we do it usually at 48 hours because we cannot keep the baby at the hospital more than 48 hours. It is very difficult. And uh, a second sample becomes important at around two to six weeks of life to identify delayed rise. This can occur especially in preterm babies as well as very sick neonates who are in the NAC. So this is one interesting study which came very recently. That is a prevention of intellectual disability through screening for congenital hypothyroidism, how much and at what level. So they reviewed all the published literature on the cognitive outcome of children with congenital hypothyroidism who were diagnosed without screening from all over the world. And these were their findings. So they found that around um, um, uh, there is a definite um, intellectual disability due to congenital hypothyroidism, uh, but um, in the literature there was some overestimate, but uh, anyway, 25% of them were having intellectual disability due to hypothyroidism. And also they uh, told that uh, uh, because uh, sometimes in screening, we may miss the mild cases. So this mild cases does not produce much of disabilities was, is another finding of this study. This again um, uh, tells us that screening is very important and uh, definitely screening and screening can identify the severe cases of congenital hypothyroidism and such uh, they can limit the 
disability. So how to approach an elevated TSH? This is according to the uh, Indian Society of Pediatric and Adolescent Endocrinology guideline, which came um, two years back. If the TSH is more than 20, the same cutoff we are keeping for our state-run program also. Uh, be it a heel prick or a cord blood sample, you have to recall the baby and do the T4 or free T4 along with a TSH sample. So if the TSH is more than 40, if the TSH is more than 40, you have to do the recall immediately. That is within 72 hours. Uh, but uh, if the TSH is between 20 and 40, it is better to recall the baby after one week. That is seven to 10 days. Why? Because if the TSH rise was due to some transient problem, we can give some time for it to settle and then we will get a more uh, prudent value. Then do a physical examination and confirmatory venous sample for uh, T4 and TSH. And if you are getting a low free T4, that is less than 1.1 nanogram per DL or T4 is less than eight microgram per DL, irrespective of the initial TSH or a free T4 of 1.17 nanogram per DL or T4 of less than 10, along with a TSH of more than 20, or if the baby is more than two weeks old, a TSH of more than 10, uh, we confirm the diagnosis of congenital hypothyroidism. And um, if the, uh, another thing is if, even though the T4 and free T4 is normal, if there is a persistent TSH elevation, that is that is more than 10 uh, milli international units per liter. So, uh, may always um, uh, be known that up to 10 in a, a newborn baby and even uh, in the early months of infancy, up to 10 TSH can be taken as normal, provided the T4 and free T4 is in the upper half of the normal range for that particular age. But if the TSH is more than 10, even though if the T4 and free T4 are normal, we are supposed to start treatment for that particular child because that mild increase in TSH indicates that there is some problem, some dysfunction of the thyroid gland, and it may unmask after some day. So it is always better to start treatment at a lower dose at the earliest. So regarding imaging, is it a, uh, necessary? Yeah, yes, if, it is, if we can do that well and good, because it will uh, tell you what is the prognosis, and if you, uh, you can uh, tell the parents that this is needed. So if you are going for an ultrasound thyroid, be known that uh, uh, even though it is easily available, there is a lot of observer dependent factors. And uh, the better one is doing a technician 99 scan, which will uh, give a clear image, like a photograph. See, this is a child who is having a genesis of thyroid. There is no thyroid uh, gland seen at all. And this can impress upon the parent that uh, the gland has not developed at all. And this child needs lifelong supplementation. That is important. Then for uh, treatment, always remember that uh, we have to give the um, uh, tablet with breast milk for the first six months of life, uh, according to our exclusive breastfeeding policies. And after six months, we can give it water, give it with water and do not give iron, calcium or soya along with thyroxine. And uh, whenever you uh, do a dose change, you have to do a repeat sample of T4 and TSH after uh, four weeks. And for further follow-up, actually every two months till six months of age, every three months from six months to three years of age, because uh, you, we know up to three years, there is rapid brain growth happening. So at that time, there should not be any deficiency of thyroxine. So we have to adjust the doses according to the values. So close follow-up is necessary. And uh, after that, after three years, uh, even six monthly follow-up is okay, but it should be done till the end of the growth. And whenever you change the dose after four weeks, we have to repeat. And uh, during the follow-up, not only the thyroid profile, you have to look at the growth. So always maintain a growth chart and make sure that the child is growing normally. And development is to be written. There should be a written uh, document of development in these children. And always uh, don't forget to do a hearing examination because here a deafness can develop later also in children with congenital hypothyroidism. So this is, I'm just sharing a study which was done in our department uh, by Dr. Jinsi and uh, under the guidance of Shanawasa. 
so this was an attempt to find out the cognitive outcome of congenital hypothyroid children and factors associated they studied 164 babies uh, uh, in which uh, congenital hypothyroidism was uh, diagnosed uh, before 3 years of age and they completed at least 1 year of treatment so the finding was that um, uh, if the initiation was delayed by 2 months there was 2.4 times increased risk of poor cognitive outcome so that again underlines the need for screening and early initiation of uh, treatment so that's all about the uh, congenital hypothyroidism and uh, thank you for your patient listening this is this were the leading spirits when we started the newborn screening at sats uh, on one of them was the superintendent one of uh, them was our hod and and the one was looking after the uh, newborn uh, unit Uh, because it was very difficult to start the program in the state itself so uh, we have the uh, credit of starting uh, for the first time in the state and actually shangasa was the one who motivated the sisters also and now it is uh, happening uh, all over the state and now the um, uh, nhm is planning to include the private hospitals also like uh, pravin did for hearing screen Uh, we are planning to make uh, congenital hypothyroidism screening available to all babies born in the state be it in private or uh, public thank you for your patient listening thank you thank you dr vyas that was a very uh, lucid discussion and a very uh, practical talk uh, there are no questions in the chat box പിന്നെ ഫോർട്ടി എയ്റ്റ് അവേഴ്സിൽ ചെയ്യുമ്പോ നമ്മൾ മിസ് ചെയ്ത് പോകാൻ സാധ്യത ഉണ്ടോ അപ്പൊ ഫീസിബിലിറ്റി ബുദ്ധിമുട്ട് മൂന്നാം ദിവസം കീപ്പ് ചെയ്യാൻ ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടുള്ളത് കൊണ്ട് ഡെഫിനറ്റ്ലി ഫോർട്ടി എയ്റ്റ് അവേഴ്സ് ചെയ്യേണ്ടി വരും അവിടെ മിസ് ചെയ്ത് പോകാൻ സാധ്യത ഉണ്ടോ അല്ലെ ബിക്കോസ് ഫോർട്ടി എയ്റ്റ് അവേഴ്സിൽ ചെയ്യുമ്പോ നമുക്ക് കൂടുതൽ കേസസ് കണ്ടുപിടിക്കാം അതായത് കുറച്ചും കൂടി ഫോൾസ് പോസിറ്റീവ് കേസസ് കൂടാനുള്ള സാധ്യതയേ ഉള്ളൂ അവരെ സമയത്തോളം ഈവൻ മേക്കിംഗ് എ ഫിയർ ഓഫ് കൺജനൽ ഹൈപ്പോറോഡിസം ഇസ് അണ്ടത്തിക്കൽ സോ ദേ വാണ്ട് ടു ഇറ്റ് ഓൺലി അറ്റ് സെവന്റി ടു അവേഴ്സ് നമ്മൾ ഫോർട്ടി എയ്റ്റ് അവേഴ്സിൽ അല്ല നമുക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റത്തില്ല പ്രാക്ടിക്കലി കാരണം uh keeping for 48 hours itself is very difficult in busy units that's ana adha false positive thane i choice a case le higher anengile 2 weeks same repeat cheyam adhe adhe okay alla adutha nakke kekamo sir sir pare pishad sir edengilum chance undo angane miss a karan adutha nakke njan oru kutti kandu adu borderline nu parne vannu adu kanju avare trace cheyidalla vannumbodhu late aayi pakshe it was 12.5 over time initial value അതുകൊണ്ട് അത്രയും നല്ല ഒരു എന്താ പറയുന്ന ഒരു ടി എസ് എച്ച് റൈസ് അവർക്ക് വരണമെന്നില്ല ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് ഇസ് കോൾഡ് ഡിലേഡ് റൈസ് ഇൻ ടി എസ് അത് നമ്മൾ കാണാറുണ്ട് സാർ അത് നമ്മൾ കാണാറുണ്ട് സാർ ഫ്രീടം അല്ലായിരുന്നു പിന്നെ ഏതെങ്കിലും ഈ ടെസ്റ്റിങ്ങിന് ഒരു ഇഷ്യൂ ഉണ്ട് ടെസ്റ്റിംഗ് ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞല്ലോ നമ്മൾ ഈ സാമ്പിൾ കറക്റ്റ് അല്ല എന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ കറക്റ്റ് ആയിട്ട് സാമ്പിൾ എടുത്തില്ല എന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഈ ബ്ലഡിന്റെ ക്വാണ്ടിറ്റിയും ഈ റിസൾട്ടുമായിട്ട് ഒരു നമുക്ക് പക്ഷെ ഇപ്പൊ നമുക്ക് ഈ റിസൾട്ട്സ് ഒക്കെ ഒരു വിധം സ്പീഡിൽ കിട്ടുന്നുണ്ട് സാർ ഈ ഓട്ടോമാറ്റിക് മെഷീൻസ് വന്നതിന് ശേഷം തിങ്സ് ആർ ബെറ്റർ എനി മോർ ക്വറീസ് ചാറ്റ് ബോക്സ് സെന്റേഴ്സ് ഇൻ കേരള വെർ ദി ഓട്ടോമാറ്റിക് ടെസ്റ്റിംഗ് ഓഫ് ഫിൽറ്റർ പേപ്പർ സാമ്പിൾസ് ആർ ഡൺ നമുക്ക് ഇപ്പൊ ട്രിവാൻഡ്രത്തും ഉണ്ട് എറണാകുളത്തും ഉണ്ട് മറ്റ് സെന്റേഴ്സിൽ ഉണ്ടോ എന്നുള്ളത് എനിക്ക് ക്ലിയർ അല്ല അതായത് നമ്മൾ ഇവിടെ ഇത് ചെയ്യുന്നത് എല്ലാം പബ്ലിക് ഹെൽത്ത് ലാബുകളിലാണ് ട്രിവാൻഡ്രത്തും എറണാകുളത്തും ഉള്ളതായിട്ട് അറിയാം ആക്ച്വലി ദി ഗവൺമെന്റ് ഇസ് പ്ലാനിങ് ടു മേക്ക് അവൈലബിൾ ഓട്ടോമാറ്റഡ് മെഷീൻസ് എവരിവേർ ഓൾ ഓൾ പബ്ലിക് ഹെൽത്ത് ലാബ്സ് 